White craters across black walls. Mm. Galaxies of mm. dust and hair on the gummy floor. Mm. Above, mm. a grid of pipes holding switched off spotlights. A faint heartbeat line of chalk. The only vestige of the first performance I've seen here. See mm. me crisscrossed on a scratched up black chair between 20 ish students gathered in this black room with a forcing entertainer, formulating, testing, either confirming, changing, or scrapping rules for how to be honest on stage, for how to fake to be honest on stage, for confusing the audience how honest honesty can be on stage. Hmm. The rules we try out for 10 minutes. One, the entire group sits on a row of chairs directly facing the audience. Mm. At the front, a mic on a stand. Two, without any particular order, one person of the group stands up and goes to the mic. If, if two people stand up at the same time, they have to remain seated and let others go first. Three. The person at the mic must share a personal memory, an anecdote, a testimony, a confession, anything, but it but it must be in first person singular. Four. This autobiographical story need not necessarily be entirely true. It can be fake. However, it must at least appear to be potentially true. Five. If a person is standing at the mic, two other people position themselves behind this person on either side. They copy every movement. Mm. Unintentional freeze frame for 42 seconds. I Play my chair with short, sudden scratches. Black splinters cut into the skin underneath my nails. My heart was a misaligned washing machine slamming against my ribs. Mm. See me spinning memories of my dog. Him lying in the foot world of our Volvo for his first time, biting me because with his young sharp teeth, because I caressed his body with my head while he wanted to sleep. <laughs> Guarding the open door to, the, to my childhood room until I fell asleep. Peeing. <laughs> Peeing. <laughs> Accidentally, on the floor, because he's too excited about our return from a three week holiday and licking it off the floor because he feels guilty. <laughs> Jumping in joy every time I grabbed the dog lead for a walk. But I hardly grabbed the dog lead. And if I pushed him harshly every time he sniffed the scent of another dog, he spent seven hours each working day in a corridor with no windows and no water, beating virtual tanks and killing virtual soldiers on command and conquer was far more important to me than feeding him. Mm. Even the simple chore of getting downstairs into the basement and scooping in dry dog food into his feeding bowl took two minutes too long for me. 
I think my carelessness was the reason his untrained heart failed to pump out the water flooding his lungs, causing him to choke to death for his entire last day. I think my carelessness is the reason for his untimely death. The confession I needed to make at that time was over. My ribs still resonated to the spin cycle of the misaligned washing machine. No. I noticed 20-ish inclined heads staring at me, breathing in air to formulate this one question. Because you knew two people will stand behind you copying every movement, which uh, transformed the three of you into a dance of six compulsive arms. <laughs> uh, I uh, I didn't notice that I was dancing. <laughs> I didn't want to dance at all, so no, I, I used my arms not so much on purpose. I just wanted to tell you about my dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I waited for somebody else to check on the words to what I said and not what I did. And never before I was so honest on stage, but it seemed to be irrelevant for what we were rehearsing. So we just changed the rules and never talked about my dog again. <laughs>